Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be part of the FAST Summit 2021, although only virtually, unfortunately. I hope that you and your families are all doing well, and hopefully the situation will improve next year so that we will be able to meet in person. My name is Brenda Vincenzi. I'm the Senior Medical Director for the Angelman Syndrome Program at Roche. Today, I give you, um, I guide you through a brief history and progress uh, for the Angelman Syndrome Program as a rush since uh, fast uh, last year. Uh, we give you a brief summary of where we stand with Frisia's observational study, an update on Tangelo Phase One drug study, and I will introduce the Tangelo long-term extension part of uh, of the study. So, what comes after Tangelo Phase One drug study part one? We've been working uh, within the Angelman syndrome community for the past uh, seven years. We started back in 2015 by listening and learning from the Angelman syndrome community. We then developed, together with ABOM, the disease concept model that is now published in 2000 and 2018 and 19 in partnership with the Ionis and Biogen. We started the co-creation of Frisia's observational study recruitment for Frisia started in 2019 when we also started to prepare for the start of phase one Tangelo drug study at Roche. In 2020, in August, we started recruitment for, the, for Tangelo and in 2021, Frisia was completed. Frisia is an endpoint enabling study in Angelman syndrome Study sponsors Roche and Genentech, co-funded with Biogen and Ionis. Frisia is a non-drug observational endpoint enabling study with a particular decentralized design, meaning, as you can see here from the, from the picture, that there are only two in clinic visa. And we explore new digital approaches uh, or digital biomarkers, as you can see represented here, for example, from the EEG at home, the, the, the sleep mat, and others. Primary objectives of Frisias are the feasibility and value of novel endpoints and biomarkers to inform clinical trial design. We enrolled 43 individuals with Angelman syndrome, age 1 to 12, 12 individuals with Angelman syndrome age 18 and above, 20 typically developing controls age 1 to 12, and the study was run only in the US and was completed in May 2021. The main study results are currently being prepared for publication and will be presented and shared with the Angelman syndrome community next year in 2022. Here are a few things to be aware of. Frisias is a non-drug study in collaboration with Roche, Ionis, and Biogen. These are separate companies working on drug studies for Angelman syndrome. Roche is working independently on our Roche drug study called Tangelo. Ionis and Biogen are working together on their Ionis and Biogen's drug study. Genentech is the U.S. affiliate of Roche. Eligibility for any current and future drug study will be based on specific inclusion and exclusion criteria. Participation in Frisias does not guarantee automatic eligibility for any current and future drug study sponsored by either Roche or Ionis and Biogen. We would like to take this opportunity uh, to thank everyone involved in Frisias, all families, all patient organizations, all trial site teams and study coordinators, all academic collaborators and study investigators. So a big uh, thank you to all of you. On this slide, you see the, the steps for uh, drug development, uh, for the drug development process. This process, as you see represented in, uh, represented in this slide, takes numerous years and starts uh, from the lab, from what we call the discovery part of a drug. 
This takes a few years. We identify a gene, a protein target, and then we start, we go into the preclinical development and toxicology studies, where the lead uh, drug or, or more than one are tested. They are tested in, uh, uh, in animals. In this case, you see represented the monkeys and, and the mouse in uh, um, non-clinical safety studies and if everything goes well and the drug is is, uh, is considered safe and well tolerated then will be uh, brought into the clinic so this is called the clinical development part of the drug and uh, uh, that means that in uh, in uh, from this point on is tested into uh, humans into patients here is where you see that we are in Tangelo today. We are tested the, the drug in a phase one study in patients with Angelman syndrome. Along the way, there are numerous health authority interactions, not only with the FDA, but also with, the, uh, in this case, European health authorities to be able to proceed with the drug development process and bring the drug to the market. Why do we do a phase one study like Tangelo? This is extremely important. So the primary objective uh, uh, of Tangelo are the safety and tolerability. Study participants are monitored for the occurrence and severity of any adverse event that they might experience during the study. Secondary objectives are what we call pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. They are complex words, but what that means is that we want to understand what the body does to the drug and vice versa, what the drug does to the body. Exploratory objectives include efficacy. Although phase one studies like Tangelo are not designed to be able to measure the potential benefit of a drug in an unbiased way, for example, by using a blinded study where the participant or the family does not know if they receive placebo or a drug, we are monitoring for any emerging efficacy data. As we always said from the beginning, we share with the community, efficacy data will only be shared at the end of Tangelo to avoid bias in reporting efficacy during the study. Tangelo is an open-label, multi-center study to investigate the safety, tolerability, pharmacokinetics, and pharmacodynamics of our molecule called UB3A LNA in participants with Angelman syndrome. Here a study overview of Tangelo. We, we, we are enrolling up to 66 individuals, both males and females, age 1 to 12. They're presented with either mutation or deletion genotypes. We have four countries uh, included in Tangelo, the US, the Netherlands, Spain, and Italy, uh, with up to 15 uh, different sites. Study duration, we started in August 2020, and we continue for uh, approximately 58 weeks. You see schematically represented the study design of Tangelo. Tangelo is an open label, meaning that all participants, all individuals enrolled in the study, receive the study medication, up to three escalating doses. So there is no placebo involved in Tangelo. It's a multi-center study. There are different centers in the US and in Europe with an adaptive multiple ascending intra-participant dose escalation. So each participant will receive two to three escalating doses on the drug after the first part of the, of the study design that is called screening. Then they enter this eight-week treatment period followed by a follow-up period uh, or safety period. The drug is administered through an intrathecal injection or lumbar puncture and the primary objective of uh, uh, Tangelo phase one drug study are safety and tolerability of the drug. Additional objectives are the PK, PD, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and efficacy. Here you see represented in more details 
the course or the study design of uh, uh, Tangelo Phase 1, Part 1. Each of these bars that you see represented in yellow are the cohorts. In yellow, you see, in yellow and blue, in yellow, you see the 5 to 12 individuals with Angelman syndrome, or cohorts A. In blue are the 1 to 4 individuals with Angelman syndrome, or cohort B. We started back in August with the first cohort, A1 cohort, with very low doses. We administered escalating doses to patients participants that were enrolled in cohort A1. We went up, but still the doses were really low. And at the end of this cohort, we look back at all the safety data, all the data coming from participants enrolled in cohort A1, and we deemed safe to proceed with additional cohorts. So we started with cohort A2 and cohort B1 especially in, in cohort A1 and B1, we started with very low doses and we escalated, so we went up with the dose only when the previous doses were deemed safe. For this reason, we called and we referred to doses administered in the first uh, uh, cohorts as a sub-therapeutic dose, meaning that we did not expect to see efficacy with the, such low doses. But once again, a reminder that objective, primary objectives of Tangelo are the safety and tolerability. So, as said, each participant enrolled in these different course will receive two or three escalating doses. And then uh, once we deem those doses safe and well tolerated, we can proceed with higher doses and other and new cohorts. So the objective is to identify the highest safe dose that can be administered to patients. And why do we want to go with the high doses? Because the higher we go with the dose, the longer will be the interval between lumbar punctures. So the duration of action of the drug will be longer if we go with higher doses, so that your child will need will will only receive a lumbar puncture, so with the injection of of the drug, with longer intervals. Here you have a recruitment update of Tangelo. You see that, as mentioned, we started the enrollment back in August 2020. We completed the enrollment for the 5 to 12 individuals with Angelman syndrome that are here represented by cohort A in yellow and cohort blue, the, the blue cohort called B for the 1 to 4 individuals with Angelman syndrome are proceeding. We are fully enrolled up to B3. And in total, we enrolled, if you consider B and A cohort, we enrolled 43 participants with Angelman syndrome. All participants are still enrolled, so there are no what we call dropouts. And the good news is that we can proceed with the enrolling patient in the B cohorts um, in the US uh, starting at the beginning of 2022. I wanted to talk a little about adverse events. So what are adverse events? Adverse event means that any medical occurrence associated with the use of a drug in humans. They can be related or not related to the study drug. Regardless if they are drug related or not, it is the decision of the doctor at your side, what we call the principal investigator, to decide whether a particular medical occurrence should be reported as an adverse event. Frequency and severity of such adverse events in all participants will be used to determine whether the drug is safe and well tolerated. Here are a summary uh, of uh, some adverse events in Tangelo. Participants in Tangelo have been clearly monitored for drug and non-drug related adverse events. Some, not all, but some participants presented with some fever and or vomiting a few days after receiving the drug through injection. Fever and vomiting are manageable with over-the-counter medication to control fever and anti medication for nausea and or vomiting. 
fever and vomiting resolved in a few days without any sequelae. All patients that present with some fever and or vomiting are doing well. Review of safety data is continuous and ongoing to facilitate the detection of potential safety signals from the study treatment for efficacy risk assessment and determination of the benefit risk relationship. What comes after Tangelo phase one? That you see represented here in, in, uh, with the two different cohorts in yellow and in blue. This is a Tangelo phase one, part one. We are almost completed with the recruitment, so we are proceeding now with the B cohorts. But what comes next? So after the Tangelo part one, we'll proceed with what we call Tangelo long-term extension. In this long-term extension, so all participants that, are, that were part, that are part of the Tangelo phase one, will have the opportunity to stay, to continue to receive the drug by continuing into the long-term extension. In this long-term extension, they will continue to receive the drug Different, different doses and longer interval than the interval that were included in the first part of Tangelo. Some participants, especially coming from the first course, we receive what we call a bridging dose. is as one additional dose to bridge the Tangelo phase one, part one, to the long-term extension. So the participant will not stay without the drug for a longer period of time. Some of the participants coming for the, from the latest course will not need a bridging dose, but they will be able to continue directly into the long-term extension. Here, I'd like to switch uh, uh, topic a little and to go through some of the most important caregivers' responsibility during the study. As a caregiver, you should uh, direct any questions or concerns related to participants' health or clinical trial to the doctor at your trial site. You must be willing to and able to attend the on-site visits with the participant and to be available to the investigational site by phone or email. The same caregiver must be available for the entire duration of the study and provide, provide feedback to study personnel about your child's state of health, skills and behavior. And also to complete all study assessment and questionnaires factually. Any information about the trial or experience in the trial should not be shared with other, other participant families to avoid influencing their feedback on the study assessment, both from a safety and efficacy perspective. Discussion on social media and other forums while on the clinical trial is strongly discouraged as it might influence the integrity of data and important outcomes for the clinical trial. This was my last uh, uh, slide. I'd like to thank you for your attention and we are looking forward for your, to your questions. Thank you.